Hello, my name is Jenan Kanono. I'm the team leader at Jenokia Holdings Limited, where we get to serve you. So if you have a financial challenge, if you have a money problem, if you have, want to scale up your business, we have you sorted. And you can always check us out at www.thejenakiholdings.com for money solutions. We are located in Tinder as our headquarters and at Mlago Business Center as our branch. Enjoy this video. <laughs> This is part two of the possible potential encumbrances if you're using car logbook as a collateral. So if you're out there and you're a lender and you're using car logbook as a collateral, there are some things that you have to look out for. I, shot, I shared that in the first video. I'm also sharing this in the second video. Different things that you have to look out for because there are many. Amongst the many, there are key things you have to look out for because at the end of the day, if you give out money on a wrong collateral that means you cannot collect that money that means it will go to a bad loan and before you know it you can only have a number of clients and then you can easily get out of business so you ought to get to keep in business because it's not about you it's not about you as md it's not about your loan as as the owner but also it's about the staff it's about their dependents it's about the community it's about the clients that you serve because you have your uniqueness there is a niche of clients that you serve that cannot be served by everyone. There is a niche of clients that, that cannot be served by anybody. So you ought to keep in business. And that's why I belabor. I look at complementarity rather than competition. Collaboration rather than competition. Why? Because there is a category of clients that you serve that we do not serve. So there are key things that you have to look out for. Key encumbrances that you have to look out for. If you're using catalog book as a collateral. The first one, red number plates red number plates you've seen uh, clients who bring cars with red number plates now the key thing with red number plates if you're not using a professional valuer it is very very tricky why because if it is a red number plate that means that car didn't pay taxes and with red number plates you can easily put a caveat but realize that they didn't pay taxes it probably was an ngo probably was a charity so it means that the moment you buy that car, or the moment you transact on that car, in the event that the client fails to pay, and you have to foreclose on that collateral, you're given the value less taxes. And if you're going to transfer that number plate, you have, you have to pay almost twice, because you have to include in the taxes. So as you're giving the money on a red number plate, make sure that the actual value of the car is determined, because red number plate alone is, an, is a potential encumbrance in the event that you're not using a professional valuer to value that car. So you need to tread carefully if it is a red number plate. But yes, you can transact on it. Yes, you can put a caveat on it. So I hope this answers most of the questions that I received from some of the guys that I mentor, that you know, can you transact on a red number plate car? Yes, and you can put a caveat, but the gist of the matter is, it is usually half the value. If the car is worth 100 million, with the red number plate, that means this person imported this car without taxes. So he paid 50 million. So when you're valuing, you can imagine if you looked at it in the angle of 100 million, that means you're potentially going to lose probably about you know, 50 million extra. So you ought to observe that critically. The other second thing that is common on the market, especially for fraudsters, is that you have to make sure that the chassis and engine number on the, in the, on the engine of the car are commensurate or they in tandem or they are similar to the ones that appear in the logbook. They have to be similar. So you can imagine if you're not a professional, if you're not very critical, if you're not very observant, because some of these details come out in a report. So you can imagine if you transact on a car whose engine was changed. Someone stole another car, came and brought the engine and switched. The body is a Mercedes, but the engine is a Toyota. <laughs> and you're landing on that car. So you ought to actually confirm that the engine number, the chassis number of the car is in tandem with the engine number and the chassis number of the actual car, of the engine in the car. The logbook needs to communicate with the actual car. Otherwise, it is a potential encumbrance. You've had people switching engines, you've had people switching cars, which cars might have been stolen. So it is important that you observe that very, very critically. Verify that. 
clarify that. The other key thing I don't know about you, because at Jonaki Holdings Limited, there are some cars we do not lend on. If the car is below 2008 model, the utmost 2007, we may not lend on it. Why? Because it is a DMC. It is in dangerous mechanical condition. So we cannot lend on such a car. 2000, 1999, 1962 vintages. <laughs> we do not lend on vintages. We don't lend on very old cars. So I do not know about your company policy, but it's important that you actually get to observe which years you start from which years to lend. Or else you will take everything and before you know it, you cannot uh, collect the money. It is a very dangerous thing. So on that very note, they, 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 there is a new trend of first lifting. First lifting. Someone buys a car that is, you know, 2006 model, he first lifts it to 2015 model. Now, if you look at the appearance of the car, the car looks 2015 model. But the actual year of make of the car is 2005. Makes it worse if you do not put a caveat on the car, if you do not verify the logbook. The guy can actually go and fake the logbook and it's actually a 2015 model in the logbook. He can manufacture the logbook. So if you do not verify, you're actually thinking this car is 2015, yet it was first lifted. This is a common trend around town. It's a very common trend. The car functions well, the car is in good condition, but the car is model 2008 but you're lending on it as if it is 2015. Definitely, the client cannot ask similar amount of money. So ideally, the client is selling this car to you. And before you know it, he starts telling you stories. Gradually, they don't even tell you abruptly. He says, by the way, I have been importing my consignment. I got this money to import something, but you know, it is stuck in Mombasa. Some clients, some of these fraudsters prepare you. They prepare you in time. He says, you know, by the way, I got stuck. You are here today, locked my, my door, he even takes a picture of a particular locked shop. And he says, no, they locked me this morning. He's preparing you. Before you know it, the guy says, by the way, because of what I told you prior, I now cannot be able to pay. Before you know it, it is a challenge. It is a problem. The guy cannot pay. But it was intentional from the word go. The guy wanted to sell the car at a profit. Because you can imagine selling a 20 a 20, uh, 2008 model and you sell it as a 2015 model. It is a big loss. So the guy is in business. So be mindful of face lifting. Be mindful. You need to verify. Is this the actual logbook? Which year of make is it? Is it in tandem with the actual car? But now if you're not a professional, you may not be able to verify all these things. Lastly and very lastly, among us the many, that you need to observe that some clients are on they set someone on standby, or he even moves with his phones, he agrees with an agent, his agent, transfer agent, he could be an agent of ERA, he says, you know, I'm going to get a loan, he comes, he genu genuinely owns the car, but he has sold the car to, a, to some other person, on standby, he brings the logbook in his name, but as, at the moment, the, the gap between when you release the money, when he applies for the money, and when you release it, you can able to transfer the car instantly. It's just a click of the button. The guy has borrowed, he has transferred the car, you've already released money, you've not put a caveat, but you have the car. But having the car is not ownership of the car. That is a civil matter. You can go to court. Could even be criminal, but the guys who are ready to go to prison. The guy leaves you with the car, he's selling the car. So it is important that don't get on pressure. Be mindful of the clients who, can, who come on Fridays and they put you in a lot of pressure as if you have to own part of their problem. So it's important. <laughs> Don't be mindful of someone who comes on Friday evening and he wants money quick, quick, and he has a color book. You cannot have all the time to verify with the government institutions to know the car is in right hands, to know the car is, is encumbrance free so that you can lend and you're sure you're going to collect the money. So it is important. First, put a caveat in the color book put a tracker if you put a tracker make sure everything is, is okay of course mindful of that of the turnaround time but don't be on pressure take all the time that you need make sure it's in the right hands so you don't transact on the wrong client on the wrong collateral
So I hope you learn these things and go and implement. Don't forget to click on like, comment, share, subscribe, click on that bell so that you're notified of when the next video is posted. Also check us out at www.jonakiholdings.com. Thank you for watching and God bless you.